Hello folks, I'm Doc Sanders. The newspaper and electronic media have been full of information about President Barack Obama. That is until recently when reporters got back to other pet subjects like the latest green environmental practices, saving the planet from global warming, a la Al Gore, ethanol production, and rising food prices. Now believe it or not, there's even been a proposal in the news to put an environmental tax on every cow, sow, and sheep. Yep, $165 on cows, $20 on sows, and $15 on sheep. As if getting your goat isn't enough for Congress already. I'll get back to this later. First, I'll review an issue I've covered previously in Ohio's Country Journal. That is, the large grocery chain's refusal to purchase milk from cows given bovine somatotropin, or RBST, a hormone that boosts milk production by about 8%. This issue affects about anyone who buys milk. And as far as I know, that's everyone except a herdsman I knew who used to pour beer on his breakfast cereal. The major grocers would have you believe that milk from cows not receiving RBST is healthier. But if you look closer, you'll see their cash registers are getting fuller as they jack up the price of non-RBST milk because it's special. Scientists can refute this claim. Suffice it to say, milk from cows given RBST as confirmed by the FDA, has exactly the same hormone profile as milk from cows not given RBST. Furthermore, it has the same chemical profile as human breast milk. And more than 10 years of research went into determining the safety of RBST before it was approved by the FDA and introduced in 1994. I'm bringing up all this old history because of a recent presentation at the World Dairy Expo published in the prestigious Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. This presentation, the findings of research at Cornell University, shows that RBST reduces milk production's carbon footprint or impact on the environment. RBST makes milk production more efficient with RBST, each cow produces more milk, requiring fewer cows and fewer resources, such as fossil fuel, to produce a given amount of milk. This lessens milk production's impact on global warming, water acidification, and other environmental factors. And it could offer real promise as the world population continues to grow reaching a projected 9 billion people within 40 years. Here in the United States, milk production will have to increase to 5.62 billion gallons to meet USDA dietary recommendations of three 8-ounce glasses of milk per person per day. The most sustainable method to do this is to increase milk production per cow. If you've been paying attention, you know how this can be done. Increasing a cow's milk production stretches her maintenance costs over more units of milk. And when you have more milk produced by fewer cows, you end up with less manure, nitrogen, and phosphorus produced per gallon of milk, which leads to less runoff into waterways and less methane will be released into the atmosphere. Here are a few mind-boggling facts. Giving RBST to 1 million dairy cows has the same effect in terms of reducing the carbon footprint as taking 400,000 cars off the road. So think of the impact if RBST could be given to all 9 million dairy cows in this country. One million cows on RBST generates a carbon credit or positive impact to the environment equivalent to planting 300 million trees. The savings in gasoline by using RBST would offset 1,550 cars each traveling 12,500 miles a year. Using RBST will enable dairymen to house and feed 8% fewer cows. 
Compare that to organic production systems that needs 25% more cows to meet production requirements. Dairymen allowed to use RBST would make a positive contribution to the environment, at least as great as the proposed tax. And who's to say the tax money would be spent effectively to improve the environment? The approximately 100 million cattle in the United States should be commended for what they do. That is, eat grass, which is indigestible to humans and convert it to useful protein and energy for our food supply. This is what an environmentalist would call a sustainable practice because grass is a renewable natural resource. Cattle put to good use the more than 45% of U.S. land that is in grass and unsuitable for crops. But the environmentalists would have everyone believe that cows and other ruminants are bad because of the methane they burp an estimated 3 to 14 percent of methane in the atmosphere. While methane in the atmosphere is considered to be 25 times more detrimental than carbon dioxide, methane accounts for a much smaller volume. And here's something else for environmentalists to chew on. What about the 100 million buffalo that were once at home on the American range? As ruminants, they also let loose with methane. But that was long before Congress developed its prowess for taxation. Well, that's it today, folks. We'll see you down the road.